Sério? É, Mamma. Corriamo giù, corriamo giù a vedere. Corri, corri. Andiamo, andiamo. Di là. Dove è andato? Da qua parte, andiamo, andiamo. Eccolo là, eccolo là. Sì, riprendilo. Buon quadro, aspetta. Ecco. Guarda, guarda, ma che è? Eh? Ah, si è diviso, si è diviso, guarda che sta. Oh, uno è volato via. Guarda, 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 guarda. Se sta a muovere, se sta a muovere. Ma io ho paura. Guarda, ce n'è uno piccolo che gli gira attorno. Ma sta a scappare via verso il lago, guarda, 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 guarda che storia mamma è andato hai capito che abbiamo ripreso mamma mia che storia oh. UFO Disclosure 2017 starts from Antarctica new breaking information comes forward from Dr. Michael Sala and Corey Good a multinational effort to excavate key regions of Antarctica in search of artifacts from a flash-frozen alien civilization created by refugees is destabilizing the continent's massive ice shelves, according to secret space program whistleblower Corey Good. He furthermore reveals that secret military bases in Antarctica are using some of the artifacts for weapons development in violation of the 1959 Antarctic Treaty, which stipulates that the continent's resources will be only used for scientific purposes. Disclosure of the Antarctica ruins is still imminent, Corey reports, as a number of key variables impact on when and how much is to be revealed to the world about the discoveries while maintaining secrecy about the ongoing military programs to weaponize alien artifacts. Corey shared additional details about the pre-Adamite civilization. The extraterrestrial civilization, identified by him as pre-Adamites, first arrived 55,000 to 60,000 years ago and established outposts all over Antarctica which notably has a land mass almost twice the size of the contiguous United States. He described them as standing approximately 12-14 feet in height and possessing elongated skulls. Corey also described how they created a hybrid species, Homo capensis according to anthropological classification, which became ruling elites, or demigods, in ancient South American, Asian and European societies. Pre-Adamites had established their main base right over ancient builder race technology, which included a stargate, or wormhole device very similar to that depicted in the popular science fiction show. Stargate SG-1. This is an example of a soft disclosure in which the US Air Force took the lead in revealing key elements of the technologies developed by the ancient builder race, who had established a travel grid throughout the galaxy using traversable wormholes hundreds of millions, if not billions, of years ago. When the pre-Adamites first arrived in Antarctica, they quickly asserted control through their advanced technologies over this area populated by human settlements at the time. With their advanced medical technologies, the pre-Adamites then began many genetic experiments, and created hybrids that became a servant class. Corey previously released his description of the flash-frozen bodies of the bioengineered hybrids during his latest visit to Antarctica. Pre-Adamite programs interrupted 22 genetic experiments being run by human-looking extraterrestrials first established 500,000 years ago. In a prior report, Corey elaborated that a superfederation comprising 4060 of these races had established competing genetic engineering programs with surface humanity. 
Corey also described how the pre-Adamites engaged in conflict with the human-looking E.T. running their 22 genetic experiments, as well as reptilians doing likewise, for global influence. Given that the pre-Adamites had established a physical presence on Earth, this gave them an advantage in establishing ruling bloodlines over the Americas, Asia, and Europe. At the same time, humans who had escaped into the Earth's interior to avoid multiple surface catastrophes monitored how the different extraterrestrial races competed against each other for influence and power over surface humanity who was still recovering from global catastrophes. One of the inner Earth races that pride themselves on their pure human bloodlines, the Anchar, had a historic connection to the human settlements in Antarctica. However, the Anshar did not cooperate with the pre-Adamites because they considered them to be sociopaths in terms of their treatment of the native Antarctica population and other regions of surface humanity where they had established colonies. Corey said that the pre-Adamites treated humans in antiquity in a similar manner to how modern humans treat dogs in terms of crossbreeding for multiple purposes. The pre-Adamites along with the reptilians, were a big problem for all humanity. The Anshar were part of a confederation of worlds that sought to make things better on the planet by providing knowledge and technological assistance as described in Sumerian cuneiform texts. Corey said that a small number of pre-Adamites survived the catastrophe that flash froze Antarctic regions by going inside stasis chambers located in the largest of their three mother ships. These ships are miles long, and not 30 miles long as reported earlier. Additional information released by Corey suggests there are many risks in waking up the pre-Adamites who would likely attempt to reassert their authority by utilizing their advanced technologies, including the little understood builder race technology. Here, Corey adds. The groups in charge of these excavated locations are taking precautions, many nukes with deadman's triggers, in case these beings become hostile. This leads us directly to the secret excavations currently underway of the pre-Adamite spaces and ships. Secret Antarctic Excavations Corey disclosed that excavations are occurring in multiple places in Antarctica by different nations, which in some cases are in direct competition to get the most advanced technologies. The goal is to eventually disclose some of these, but many technologies, especially those that are clearly extraterrestrial in origin will be not be released, at least to begin with. Corey said that all the nations involved in the Antarctic excavations are capable of making a disclosure announcement on their own, but they are all participating in negotiations to do so in a coordinated manner. Corey thinks the Antarctica disclosures will begin in tandem with prosecutions of the elites involved in pedophilia, human trafficking and other crimes, which includes the blackmailing of leading politicians, academics, industrialists and military officials. He says that the recent Trump administration action to sack 46 district attorneys was due to their inaction in moving forward with such prosecutions. Alternatively, the Russians, the Chinese, or smaller nations could begin the Antarctic announcements, if negotiations drag out and the U.S. fails to move forward. The former nations are part of what Corey describes as the Earth Alliance. This group has rapidly grown in prominence with economic power mounting in Asia as global cabal, Illuminati power centers in Europe and North America continue to gradually wean. Military bases in Antarctica and weaponizing alien artifacts. Corey points out the major violations occurring in terms of breaking the Antarctic Treaty, which prescribe the weaponization of Antarctica. Antarctica shall be used for peaceful purposes only. There shall be prohibited, inter alia, any measures of a military nature, such as the establishment of military bases and fortifications, the carrying out of military maneuvers, as well as the testing of any type of weapons. Furthermore, Corey points out that the R&D installations are highly against the Antarctic Treaty that states no weapons will be tested or developed in Antarctica. 
Also, for over 50 years American shadow government groups have controlled a former Nazi base for their secret space program and turned it into a major spaceport that not only houses advanced ICC spacecraft, but also manufactures and repairs certain types of these vessels. These Antarctica bases form an Antarctica version of Area 51. Significantly, Lockheed Martin, the same corporation that helped establish Area 51 as a secret aerospace development facility in the mid-1950s, was in 2011 given a $2 billion contract to manage Antarctica operations for the National Science Foundation. This suggests that Lockheed Martin is using its National Science Foundation contract as a cover for a highly classified and illegal aerospace weapons development program in Antarctica's Area 51. What Corey reveals above is indeed a violation of the Antarctic Treaty which also states in Article X. Each of the contracting parties undertakes to exert appropriate efforts, consistent with the Charter of the United Nations, to the end that no one engages in any activity in Antarctica contrary to the principles or purposes of the present treaty. This is where provisions in the Antarctic Treaty become problematic since there are a number of non-signatory groups that operate military bases in Antarctica. Corey explains. There are a number of other spaceports in Antarctica that belong to breakaway Nazi remnants, as well as non-terrestrial groups that have huge Bất ngờ luôn. Nó qua bản tiếp đầu bắt đầu. Ê khô là, ê khô là. Si đi prendi lo. Bộ quả nó sẽ ta. Ai. Che storia, guarda, guarda. Che è? Ah, si è diviso, si è diviso, guarda che sta. Oh, uno è volato via. Guarda, 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 guarda. Se sta a muovere, se sta a muovere. Guarda, ce n'è uno piccolo che gli gira attorno. Ma sta scappando via. Corriamo giù, corriamo giù a vedere. Corri, corri. Andiamo, andiamo.